is uh, Chef Kobbe. I'm working for Continuum. Continuum is one of uh, the greater grid operators in the Netherlands. Um, I am involved in safety requirements for low voltage and medium voltage uh, grids and installations connected to that uh, grid. Furthermore, I am involved in power quality issues and uh, uh, involved in a European project about uh, intelligent networks, future grids. Uh, Continuum enables me to work at the University of Technology in Eindhoven one day a week. So I'm involved in research about power quality issues uh, there, helping the university with developing the power quality lab and guiding uh, students, master students and PD students uh, with their work. So I think that's a brief overview of what I'm doing. <coughs> the power quality conference here in Barcelona uh, presented a paper about the uh, integrated approach for regulations for uh, uh, regulations for the point of connection, so that uh, it is very clear what is the responsibility for customers, grid operators, and manufacturers on the, in the field of power quality. This is, uh, I think, a very difficult topic, certainly for low voltage installations, because there are a lot of low voltage installations connected to the grid, and they all contribute to harmonic distortion or flicker uh, level. So what we need and what is not existing on the moment is a very clear requirements. What is the responsibility of the customer? What is the responsibility of the grid operator? Um, there are, of course, um, standards for devices, harmonic currents, uh, about flicker uh, level uh, contribution. But we don't, uh, cannot use these standards for devices. What we need is... Uh, requiring for the point of connection because a lot of devices are connected to that point of connection and we need requirements for that point of connection. So what we did uh, presented here in Barcelona is how can you achieve these requirements for the point of connection and the flicker requirement is one important start so we have to look to the impedance of the grid, we have to look to the voltage because the voltage and the impedance of the grid is I think the responsibility of the grid operator and when we look to a customer, this the current who is the responsibility of the customer. Starting with Flickr, we have defined these uh, harmonic, of the, these uh, voltage and these grid impedance. And this grid impedance is further on used to uh, to develop uh, the limit for harmonic current for the customer. So you get an integrated approach of uh, power quality problems, taking into account the responsibilities for a customer and grid operator and taking into account uh, several power quality problems. So that is uh, the main thing. Furthermore, what is interesting here in the power quality conferences and what we have worked out within the company is, uh, I think, a very important classification about A, B, C, D, F. Because when you look to all the power quality problems and measurements we have done in the field, you get a lot of data and you have to analyze it and it's very difficult and time consuming. So what we did is to make a very easy to use classification about power quality data. When you look to the, the classification and look to power quality problems in general, uh, as grid operator we talk a lot with customers and customers don't understand always the, what we are talking about, what is harmonic distortion, what is flicker. Of course they see the, the light and they know the problem but when you talk about the PST or PLT or harmonic distortion, they don't understand. So it is very important for us to have a communication method to talk with the people and to give an overview of what is the quality of the power quality in our grid. And with making this A, B, C, D, E, F classification, what they are used to because it is used for washing machines or cars, uh, they have a good picture of a B classification that will be a good quality or C it is good enough and when you are going lower it will be not good and I have to have, I have the possibility to complain. So it is a good uh, thing for the customer to to use but also for the regulator. The regulator wants to have an overview of the whole grid and what is the quality of the low voltage grid and the medium voltage grid and the high voltage grid. So we can do two things. We can send a lot of data to the regulator and they will not be able to understand what it means or they have not the time to analyze it. Or we can say that 90% of our grid has a classification B. 
10% as a classification C, and with this classification it will be very easy to uh, convince the grid, the regulator, what is the quality of our grid. Furthermore, for the grid operator itself, it's a very uh, good tool to analyze the, the own grid. Of course, we have a lot of measurements, and in the future we want to have a measurement of power quality in each substation, in each distribution, distribution station, and with the smart metering, perhaps at every customer. And you want to want to analyze that data without a classification so simple as this, will not be possible. So you, you need a classification. I think it is uh, needed that there's somebody who wants the classification. I think as a grid operator we want it because it makes life easy to analyze the grid. I think it is uh, the, the regulator who has a lot of benefit of it. So I think smart regulators will ask for it that make uh, an overview of the quality of your grid in an easy way and that classification can be uh, used for this purpose. But to implement it, uh, the people who are making the power quality measurement uh, devices have to make their software in a way that you can pick up the, the data you use. We don't use all these data. You want to have an average of the power quality level, average of the harmonic distortion during a week. And uh, we want to know something about the distribution, so we know not only want to have the, the average, but also want to have the standard deviation. And with these two parameters, we can build the ABCDF classification. So people who are making these devices, uh, I will ask them to make it possible that we get this data out of the instrument. Um, we have already made a device ourselves, as we call the SAS sensor. We use it for automatization of our substations, and with that SAS sensor, and the software behind it, we already implemented the ABCDF classification with our, within our company. The importance of power quality, what I said in the beginning, is not the responsibility for one player. It is the responsibility of a grid operator. It is the responsibility of the people who are making devices. It is the responsibility of part of the customer. So, in principle, a lot of people are involved. And as grid operator, we want to work together with the uh, the branch of customers who was asking maybe for a certain power quality or want to know something about power quality. We have to work together with customers, with the manufacturers. We are making power quality devices, but also the tools to mitigation of power quality problems. Uh, we want to work together with universities because a lot of research done on field of power quality is done on universities. So that's one of the important reasons that the uh, Continue on enables me to work one day a week uh, at the university because this, I think within the field of power quality still a lot of work has to be done, so a lot of research has to be done. So I think certainly the, the universities is uh, an important partner for us.